Yo, what's up? It's your boy Nitro Hot Fire here. Welcome back to the channel. This is the spot where I talk about lifestyle, business, and filmmaking. And today's topic is going to be talking about beginner level filmmaking and whether or not the Canon M50 is a good camera for beginner filmmakers. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am a filmmaker with 10 plus years experience. Um, I started here on YouTube or just on the internet and just kind of growing my journey from basically YouTube to Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus. I have seen the full range of what beginning filmmaking looks like, intermediate filmmaking, and as well as professional filmmaking. So I wanted to actually answer this question because I thought that it was a really good question. Now, we wanna start off just in general is if the Canon M50 is good for beginner filmmakers. The short answer to that is yes. It's gonna give you everything you need, which is a camera. The main thing you're gonna need is a camera to basically start filmmaking and is a good starter point. Now, if you don't have a budget to buy a camera in general, and if you're just shopping around and the question, if the question is asked because you're looking to buy a camera, I would say to wait before you buy a camera at all and just start off filming on your camera on your phone and if you film on your phone it will give you the benefit of having the software that's usually in phones that kind of make the image better than what it is it kind of like uh, interpolates the image to make it look more appealing to the eye and i think that's a good compensation for people who are just kind of starting off in their filmmaking journey uh, the image quality on phones is usually really good because of that software boost that it adds. Now, I will say that most cameras in general are just good in the daylight. And so when we start getting into the complicated st ways of talking about whether a camera is good or not, it's going to really boil down to if, if it's going to be good in low light situations or not. But a lot of people don't know when they're first getting started is that a lot of that can be fixed as well which is having a better lens so what we're really going to talk about first is uh, um, just the camera in general and uh, we're not going to talk about specs or anything like that we're just going to talk about the three main reasons why the canon m50 is a good camera now before i get started this is the canon m50 right here um, I want to express that this is the Mark II version. You don't really want to get the Mark I version because of the fact that the Mark II version came with the main feature that is going to be good for you, which is going to be outputting the HDMI into an external recorder, which is going to be awesome for you. Uh, the reason why that's good is because uh, it will allow the camera to grow with you. Now, since we're talking about filmmaking and just film production in general, let's talk about uh, what is a good filmmaking camera and why they cost so much. So <laughs> the really good filmmaking cameras out there are cinema cameras. Cinema cameras are usually those giant cameras you see on film sets that kind of... Um, they're, they're just popular uh, when you see them because they're huge. And so when we start off in our filmmaking journey, we kind of feel like that is kind of where we need to get to. And I'm going to let you know now that's not technically true, but it's technically is true. Um, the reason why the cinema cameras are so good is just the amount of features they have in them. Um, as you go up in cameras like you start off at the low level cameras which may be the canon m50 but you work your way up to like the higher level cameras uh, which are cinema cameras uh, your image quality doesn't go up that much cinema cameras have the benefit of having what's called a high dynamic range what that means is that um, you will have more of your image visible in like the brightest of brights and the darkest of darks you'll be able to see things like um, if you ever watched uh, somebody who made a YouTube video, for example, and the, they're standing in front of a window and the window is just all white and you see them perfectly clear, uh, that's because the camera that they're using has a lack of dynamic range. Dynamic range will allow the camera to see both in front as well as out the window and you can see a lot of the quality of whatever is outside of the window. Now, fun fact though, if you're using your phone, phones have uh, the software that actually compensates for that and so 
they give you the illusion of having a high dynamic range because the software actually compensates for those parts of the image and they kind of just um, use the AI and different um, software-y type stuff in order to make the image look good. So that's something that um, I always say that if you're using your phone, that is a good way to kind of like compensate yourself as a beginner because there's a lot of skill um, that takes place into learning how to make the camera look as good as possible, how to bring out the dynamic range in out of a camera and different things like that. And so what I mean by that is a lot of people don't know that there is actual uh, neutral density film that we put over windows. Uh, neutral density uh, filters, for example, are filters that, oh, I got one right here. They are filters that take in light they're kind of like sunglasses for your lens. So I don't know if you can even see this on camera. You see how you can actually make this darker and lighter like that. You can see through that. So the neutral, so there is actually a film we put over glass for in the background of like uh, if someone standing in front of a window, uh, you can just kind of put that over the glass and that'll kind of shade out all that light and you can actually see out the window. Again. So that is a skill based thing that you, you really wouldn't know that if you didn't have the knowledge for that. And so a lot of people would just buy a stronger camera. But um, back in the day, we didn't just have we didn't just buy stronger cameras to compensate for those things. We had to learn how to get around those situations. And so I would say that um, definitely the Canon N50 is going to be a really good starter camera when you're trying to learn because then that's you kind of learn how to overcome the short sightings that it does have. Now, some one of the benefits I like to talk about is the fact that it is tiny. And so when you're first starting off, I will say you probably don't have uh, you probably don't have permits and things like that for your camp for your locations and things like that. And so when you're using a tiny camera, um, a lot of times what happens is nobody's gonna care, nobody's gonna be attracted to you, no one's gonna ask you for a permit, no one's gonna start asking questions. Um, that's one really good benefit of the Canon N50 is that it is small. Um, when it comes to image quality though, which is what a lot of people want to know if the image quality is good, most cameras are good nowadays. Uh, most cameras are good in the daylight. Most cameras are going to give you a good image. Um, the Canon N50, however, it has an issue with the, it's not really an issue. The 4K, for example, uh, it crops in and you lose your autofocus. Um, I will say as a starter, our autofocus is going to be really good. 1080p is going to be your best friend. The reason why 1080p is going to be your best friend is because the file sizes are not going to be huge <laughs> if you don't have a good editing uh, computer for that. And so it's going to be a very good starter point for you to start shooting in 1080p and editing footage in 1080p. You don't really want to jump over into 4K just yet because it's just such a hassle dealing with those file sizes. Now, for those who don't know, is 1080p and 4K are actually not just the resolution or the quality of the image, it is actually the size of the image. So the 1080p size image is going to be here, and 4K is going to be about four times the size of that, which is going to be like there. And so what that does is that the file sizes themselves are going to be four times roughly the size of what the 1080p is going to be. So I don't recommend shooting at 4K when you first start off. I think it's a waste of energy and resources. Um, your memory card, like if you're looking for a budget camera too, your memory card is probably not going to be that good. And it's just going to be a whole hassle of those different situations you're going to have to go through. So um, I'm going to let you know that the most of your image quality is not going to come from your lens. From your camera, it's going to come from your lens. And so I recommend uh, jumping over here uh, at some point upgrade to the Sigma 18 to 35. That is this lens right here. Boom. It is heavy and sexy. And now in order to make this work with the Canon N50, you're gonna need a adapter, which is gonna be here. And so what this will do, it allows you to adapt lenses. These are EF mount lenses. Um, the mount that the Canon N50 uses is the M mount. And so what that's gonna do is you're gonna attach the adapter to so like that. And then this will give you the ability to use this lens on the Canon M50. Now, I personally have not seen any issue with adapting lenses 
to the Canon M50, especially using the adapter, it has worked perfectly fine for me. Um, and I have shot a lot of projects on the Canon M50 when I got started. The reason I got started is because my filmmaking journey, I knew that I'm going to have to have a lot of practice and I'm going to have to work with a lot of people who are beginners. And so with me uh, primarily acting in a lot of my projects myself, um, the Canon M50 is a camera that is not super intimidating to pass off to somebody else if they need, if somebody else needs to work with the camera. Now, one of the benefits of the camera, I will say, is that you can kind of grow with the camera. And so in order to get to a point of using something like a cinema camera, you're going to have to, um, you can rig it out. So what that means is you can buy attachments, like this is my setup right here, I buy attachments in order to actually give features to the Canon M50 that it doesn't uh, originally come with. And so, for example, uh, this is an audio mixer and this is an external battery. Up here is where I put a microphone. If I'm using a microphone up top, or a lot of times, as you see now, I'm using a wireless microphone. I love, 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 love wireless microphone. This is the Rode Wireless Go. Definitely recommend micing up your actors and things like that with wireless microphones. It is so good, so, so good. <laughs> it's definitely way better than using the microphone on top of the camera or on top of the rig. But if that's all you have, then you should use what you have. Now, I will say all of this together, um, the rig itself costed about uh, like $30. Um, the audio mixer costed about like, um, I think it was like $200. And then the external battery was about $200 as well. Um, and then the Canon M50 itself costed about $500. And then where the real money and the real investment goes into when it comes to image quality is gonna be your lens. Uh, this lens costs about 800 bucks. Um, and then the adapter itself costs about 100 bucks. And so what's really cool about that is that if you decide to upgrade later, you can upgrade the camera later, keep the lens, keep the battery, keep the sound mixer, keep the rig, and just upgrade the camera as you go. And so that's what I mean by the camera itself can grow with you. And so you can have uh, all the features of a cinema camera without um, having to shell out all that money all at once. And so what I did was I started with the Canon M50 and then I just upgraded, upgraded the sound first and then later on I upgraded the battery pack um, with the V-mount battery and the battery adapter that goes with this. Matter of fact, this battery can last me like I can shoot for days at a time without ever having to charge the battery. So this is amazing. So definitely recommend getting the V-mount battery. And as you see though, when you have all this, you get that huge setup that we was talking about with cinema cameras before. And the thing about that is eventually you will need that type of stuff to, in order to make everything look good or rather to have the features of a cinema camera. But um, also you don't kind of need those things when you're first starting off. You need to focus on composition for shot composition, uh, story composition, and you need to worry about like directing as well as making sure your dialogue comes off clear and concise. I'm gonna um, end up putting some uh, footage that I have captured with the Canon M50. Um, I hope this answered your question of whether or not the Canon M50 is a good camera for beginner filmmakers. Um, I want to really just focus on the aspect of just being a beginner and things you will have to worry about. I'm not, not worried too much about specs and things like that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe and follow. And if you have any more comments or questions or anything like that, just put them in the comment section down below. And either I will get to you in a typing comment or I will just get to you in a video like this. I appreciate you guys. This is your boy Nitro Hot Fire. I'm out. Peace.